Hey Grant, have you got everything all organised yet? Almost. Jeez. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, we're ready for you any time. No, no, we're ready for you now, Grant. Jeez, what do you got in these bags? What do you mean? They're as heavy as lead. <laughs> no, they're not. Oh, gosh. Anne's never complained about carrying them. My God. Well, what's in, what's, well, I can guess what's in that one. Well, what about just, this one? This one's bloody heavier than that one. A special bag. Okay. All right. All right, we'll get things going in a sec. Okay. Hi, folks. One of the um, joys of photography is the gear that you accumulate over time. And um, there's so much of it, there really is, and it does become a, a bit of a, a challenge as to what you need versus what you want and all that sort of stuff. So today we're going to have a quick look through uh, a couple of camera bags and just see what, we, what we've got in them. Um, one of the most essential tools in your kit should be one of these things. A simple monopod. Um, most of your camera blur, shake, comes from when you press the shutter. Why's it only got one stick? Why's it one? Why, why not three, like a normal tripod? What did I just call it? You, you called, called it monopod. I monopod. know that. But why, why the one? Why not tripod? Because it's easier and simpler to carry if all you, if that's all you're carrying. Because most of your, your shutter blur and shake comes from when you press the shutter down. If on this, you're supported. You get very little blur that way in, in actual fact. So monopod is a good tool to have, particularly for sports. Take note when you're watching any replays or whatever a sport. Generally on the sideline you'll see a brightly coloured vested uh, photographer with his camera set up on a monopod. Now, you may well have one of these at home, and most of you will, and you may even have this little gizmo on it attached to the leg. You may know what it's for, but if you don't, it's got a little thread in it, a little uh, head on it, and that is for the bolts on your monopod leg. So if you're using doubling this up as a walking stick, as you're walking along hiking, and you're finding that the legs are closing up or it's lost a bit of its firmness, go along with the tool that came with it and simply tighten those bolts up. Just a little tip, which I know you, you already knew that, but that's for the odd person that didn't. So that's a, that's a monopod. Now, Brad's mentioned tripods. These things are the essential tools. I don't care where you're going, how far you're going. Tripods are the essential tool. They come in all shapes and sizes, all brands, etc. Um, I don't think there's really bad ones. My test for a, a tripod Shop owners mightn't really like you doing this, but if you've got one in the shop, if you're buying it from a, a box store, you walk along, lean on it, grab it, give it a shake, give it a shake. If you can flex it and move it while you're doing that, then it ain't going to hold much, is it? It's not going to do a lot of good on, on, on your camera. What about tripod heads? Tripod heads? Um, oh, this is a bigger issue as tripods. They, they will get a lot of different ones. They will go. come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. This particular one is a Vanguard tripod and head, comes as a kit. Um, and it's quite a good head. It's a multifunctional directional head, it's ball head, it's pano head, it does all sorts of things. 
This particular tripod also will flick out this main leg and drop it down underneath and all, all types of things. So that's your sort of full size Monty tripod. One Jeez, of the issues. You got more. I got more. <laughs> Mate, because if you're flying these days, you can often be limited to the weight you can carry. And that becomes a bit of a problem. So if you are limited to the weight you can carry and you want to go for something lighter, you go for one of these, these little fellows. So what, what is that? That's a little Vanguard again. And it works something like this. When I work out... <laughs> Good demonstration, when, Andrew. When I, when, I work out, when I work out how... I haven't used this for a while. There are bits and pieces coming out <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me put it on here. Hang on, here, here we go. We've got to push that button in. That's right. And then that goes up to there. And da-da, you have your tripod. So... That also has a ball head by the look. That's its own little ball head. Um, the plates are actually interchangeable with the larger one. Um, this is carbon fibre. It's very light, but it's not... Look, it's OK. I used it a couple of years ago on a fairly big trip. You should recognise this, Brad. You would have seen this. It was, like it was mostly dark when we were out prowling around. So. Um, again, if you do the little test... Okay, so it's, you know, it's reasonably sturdy, it's not too bad. I shoot a lot with a, uh, a 7200 2.8, so I would use it on this, but I would then hang off of here, that little clip, I would hang my camera bag or another bag I'm carrying and filled with stones or sand or whatever to give it more weight and support. So that's a little tripod. Alternatives for you to look at. Okay, so that brings us down to the actual camera bag. I've got a couple here to show you. Do you know the way to that camera bag, Grant? This one? No. This one? Yeah. Um, I would be in trouble if I was flying with this one. There's no way I'd get under the, the seven kilos. The One of the problems with camera bags these days is... Oh, this is a bit heavy, I'm one. dying to know what's in that other camera bag. Oh, it's, 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 it's essential items. Essential Check items. it. When, when you're buying a new camera bag, with flying... It's a tripod, isn't it? With, <laughs> with, flying, with flying in mind, check the net weight of the bag. Because if the net weight of the bag is three kilos, for example, then you're only leaving yourself four to actually put in it to get up to your seven kilos weight. And now that a couple of airline companies are, are, are running around at the airport with um, portable scales and weighing you at the gate, it's, you know, it's the thing you've got to be really wary of because the last thing you want is to be forced to put this in the check baggage in this state. So don't do it. Now this kit is my day kit. This is my grab it at any time and run kit. So. The thing I like about the TAM rack is it secures everything in there really well. It's nice and deep in its uh, pockets inside. Um, the, the Velcro straps here are positive. So we of course have Uno body coming out there. That's the 70, that's the Sigma 7200 on a Pentax K1. Mark II body, full frame. That's a Pentax DA Star 300. That is my super wide, which is a, an old Tokina 19 to 35 F28. Story behind that lens, but that's all right. We'll talk about that another day. And this is my most used lens. It shouldn't have had that come off. This is my most used lens, the Pentax 2470 f2.8. Um, does the bulk of the work along with this. So this kit, I can jump out to three, 300 if I need to. The 300mm so, is, is f4, by the way. So what type of photos do you take with each of those lens, lenses? Because um, 
a lot of those lenses will have a certain type of photography that they are used for. Well, hopefully one's in focus for a start. Um, <laughs> um, that helps. Um, the 7200, you can, you can really use it on anything. I can use this for sports, being F2, F2.8, and I did when I used to shoot um, motocross. This lens did all, all of the work. Um, and that was on, a, on an APS-C body then, so I was actually effectively using 100 to 3, 300. If anything, it was a bit long at the short end, if you, if you understand that. But um, it's a great lens, good, good quality, uh, pr produces an, a, an excellent image. I'd feel confident walking around with that lens to do virtually anything unless I particularly wanted wide. If I want wide and I know I'm going to shoot landscapes and landscapes only and wide is a factor for me and I'm not that worried about any zoom capability, then the 2470 would become the, um, the lens that would live on, on the body. For example, if I was touring into a new place I hadn't been in, um, I would leave with this lens on the camera and I'd be carrying the, uh, the 7200 as a, as a backup, if, if uh, you like. Um, this, will, this will cover most, most sins, so uh, you'll get there. The 1935, I bought this in a shop in Hong Kong. Um, I was in there with my son, he was picking up his Nikon. And uh, it was a Nikon shop on, uh, on the um, city side in Hong Kong. And there's a street there, and I forget the name of the street, but it's got camera shops everywhere. And I'm standing in there in this shop and looking up at this wall of boxes of cameras, thinking, wow, I can get some, spend some money in here. You know, this is a good place. And they're all, of course, Nikon. And there down the row of this boxes, which was from floor, floor to ceiling, is this one Tokina box, and on the printed on the side of it was four Pentax. I thought, oh, well, that's a bit unusual in a Nikon shop. So I asked about it, and he produced it, and it was a, a 20 to 35mm um, ATX Pro F2.8, um, and oh, look, I think he had something like 1500 Hong, Hong Kong dollars on it, might have been a tad more. And he said, look, I don't know how it got there. It shouldn't be there. Make me an offer. So I said... Oh. Did he have a big heavy jacket on, did he, Grant, and open it up? No, 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 no. This was, was, a, this was in a shop. It's in a shop. <laughs> this was in a proper shop. He was, he was a genuine fella. So I offered him two, 200 He picked himself up off the floor and dusted himself off and... Stop crying after a few minutes. And I know how that feels when I'm talking to you, Grant. <laughs> I'm constantly in tears when I talk to you. <laughs> that's, that's lovely. That's lovely, isn't it? And he said, oh, I can't possibly sell it for that. And I said, oh, you, you, you asked me to, to make an offer. So I'm, I made an offer. I said, oh, that's probably a, a bit of a, a silly offer. How about five, 500 Hong Kong dollars we're talking, when the exchange rate was something like seven to one. And he still shook his head and muttered something about... Guido's and whatever. And um, so my son finished his business and picked up his camera and we walked out. We got on the street, next minute he called out from the back from the doorway, all right, all right, come back, come back. So I bought myself a lens. So it was, yeah, it's okay. I don't say it's a top end lens, but it's fine. Um, as well in here, we have a little teleconverter. That works quite well. A 1.4 teleconverter. So and what's your main, main focus of putting teleconverters on? If I was trying to shoot wildlife yep. and I wanted, I wanted the real reach, um, I can set that to an APS-C crop as well, the body. So I can get out technically to probably approaching 600 if I had yep. to yep. off that body. Um, don't use it a lot to, to, uh, to be frank with you. This little lens um, is an FA43, one of the, their Pentax's limited series. Be careful if you're uh, handling it, Brad. It will uh, cut you. It is that sharp. <laughs> um, it is a brilliant, a brilliant tool. Um, it's a great thing. So that is 1.8. So that gives me 
from 19 mil, 20 mil, out to if I use the the, the, the tele converter beyond four four hundred plus five hundred gives me f one f one eight in real low light uh, conditions um, covers me for my landscapes indoor you'll notice everything is f two eight or or um, or more so I try and keep away from anything that's not in 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 those ranges simply because Low light. If you get in, in low light and you want to, you want the ability, the capability, then that's to me is really important. That's it. Nothing more in there. Yep. Now we're being very good. We are being very good. I suppose I should should talk about the camera, shouldn't I? You should. I should talk about the camera. Now the trouble with the um, the Vanguard bag. What the hell? <laughs> Alright, I've seen enough. What? I've seen enough. Just the first part of the zip, I've seen well, enough. Well, that's essential, Brad. <laughs> I mean, look, mate, if you were, if, <laughs> if you were caught hiking, if you were caught hiking in the, in the Rocky Mountains or the Flinders, you know, and it's been a long, hot, arduous day, light's been absolute rubbish, you haven't, no, you haven't been able to. A true blue Aussie. You haven't been able to get what you want. You know, what would you really be looking forward to at the end end of the day? Now, so this folks, this is the most important folks, piece of camera equipment according this, to Grant. This is not a roll of toilet paper, okay? <laughs> there's a there's one of those in the car, um, but this is the sort of thing that you know at the end of the day, and this is particularly aimed for a couple of Canadians who I travelled with some some years ago. Every time we'd shoot and we'd stop um, chasing their mythical moose, actually. Now, that's a whole e episode that we may get to to uh, Jim and Dave one day. But they, we would pull up and inevitably they'd open the back of the car and they would feed me some Molson Canadian beer. Now, boys, this is for your, for your benefit. Okay, here it is. This is beer, not the stuff you were drinking. That's fizzy water. This is beer. All right. Coopers, right, you're make the Coopers go wild. Coopers do export too. You can order it online. They'll, they'll they'll send it to you, fellas. So in this bag we have essential items like a six pack for the end end of the day. Oh, just a minor detail. Um, pockets in this one. This one's okay for if you're carrying a shower jacket or something, you know, this component's quite good for stuff. You can put a, a, another lens in there if you want to. You can do lots of things in that pocket. The, I'm clearly. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of it, in this section, as you can see, it's quite well decked out. That's just something I bought recently from that country we don't want to talk about at the moment. Um, and look, it's a good bag, but with this shut and traveling a lot with a lot of this gear in this bag, what I was discovering was that these weren't holding overly well. And I was going to opening the bag and finding that the lenses had moved around. Like I might open it and one of the lenses would, would be on top of here. They'd actually moved within the compartments, getting on and off planes and cars and everything else because this area, when this is zipped up, it's not rigid. There is movement in that. So you can see the amount of movement that that will spread. So that lets anything that's in that lens bag, if those Velcro straps don't hold, it will move. It has side access, which is great. And I love the bag, I really do. Um, lets you just go to that, but to get to that, you are moving the bag around, you're turning it on its side, etc. And that, I think, is part of the reason that you then see the, the movement inside the bag, in here. So, a good bag is lightweight, and that's probably all connected. Has plenty of pockets, extra pockets for laptops, etc, etc. Um, it has the raincoat, the, 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 um, the full bit. So, quite, quite good. Um, this particular one has another one of those really sharp 
lens is in it. Be careful when you're handling it, Brad. Okay. This one also cuts you. <laughs> that's a that's a 200 mil DFA 200 uh, DA sorry 200, and this body in this bag is the APS-C body. That's Pentax's K5 uh, K3 Mark II sorry, and that's got the 5135 Pentax um, DA star lens on it, which is equivalent therefore of 70 to 200. Great lens, it's a great rig actually uh, that one, it's a good uh, walk around rig, relatively lightweight in comparison to the uh, uh, K1, has all the features of the K1, um, is a, a very, very good kit um, and I'm un unashamedly Pentax because I started with them and I've seen no, no reason to uh, change. So That, folks, takes you through my bags. Fantastic. All right, well, uh, I'll keep you out in the front there, Grant. So, um, basically, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And, um, yeah, there'll be more great content coming from Photo Australia. And uh, it was uh, great to have you join us. So, with that, we will see you in the next video. So, say goodbye, Grant. Goodbye. Cheers, Jim and Dave. We, we, we are coming for you guys. We, we're coming for you. Okay, bye.